Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Meet the Expert webinar today. Uh, my name is Allison. I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of introduction into how today's webinar will work, and then I will hand things over uh, to our expert, Colin, who's going to show you some workflows today. Um, I am also joined by some colleagues uh, helping out on the Q&A side today, just in case uh, we have any questions so that we can all get you the answers that you need. So um, just to uh, give a, a bit of a, a background, we are doing a couple of training webinars. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, we have another one coming up next week, which is the Advanced Time Registration and Crew Financials class. And then we have another one the next week, which is Managing Sales and Installation Jobs. So uh, we will be sending out emails uh, to register for these, just like we did for this one. Uh, but you will also find a link to our webinars page in the uh, chat uh, down below. Uh, and in the webinars page, you can find all upcoming webinars and you can register for any of the ones that we have upcoming that you'd like to join. So this webinar, the way that it will work is that you are in listen and view only mode, so you can't talk or turn on your camera, but you will find the Q&A section below. Uh, we won't be using the chat today, so any questions you have, please put those in the Q&A. Uh, some questions we may answer live, some questions we may answer there in the Q&A, and if needed, we might have to follow up with uh, some specifics if it's a, an account specific question. Um, but this session will be recorded, so if anything comes up, don't worry, uh, you can leave and we will send out that recording uh, about one day after the webinar. And um, we will also put a recording on the webinars page of our website, so you can always check back uh, if you want to reference it again. And then today in our Meet the Expert webinar, uh, Colin from Multimedia in South Africa will be talking about some of the, the warehouse flows uh, that he deals with in his job and also how to create purchase orders or POs with uh, using sub rentals. And then he'll also go through a couple of, of important overviews, how he created those overviews and some of the information that is included. And then last but not least, we'll save some time at the end uh, for questions. So it could be that we save a question you ask during it and answer it at the end, or we will try to answer some uh, throughout if we can. Now, uh, our expert today is uh, Colin, and he is from Multimedia in uh, South Africa. And uh, Colin has been in the industry since he was 15. And uh, he started working uh, doing AV with churches, and then he went on to uh, study sound engineering. And uh, he worked in the warehouse for a bit, also doing some project management. And now he works as the IT and facility facilities coordinator. Uh, he really has a heart for the IT side of things. And uh, one of the things that uh, Colin enjoys most is, is really just finding solutions to things. I, I really enjoyed getting to work with him, planning this webinar. Uh, because he's always finding uh, the right solution for things. So hopefully he can also help you guys uh, find solutions to some of the challenges you might face also using Renman. All right, without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn things over to Colin. And uh, I think we will get started talking about some warehouse workflows. What do you, what do you think about that, Colin? Yes, I think that's a good way to get started. Perfect. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> So, um, Colin, can you start by telling us a little bit about your warehouse setup? So, you know, how are you using Rutman in the warehouse? Uh, you know, are you scanning? And uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, at our warehouse, we use a, a data logic quick scan scanner. So, we use barcodes primarily in our warehouse. Um, so, this scanner doesn't do QR codes, it only really does. Um, the normal old barcodes. Um, how we set up the warehouse computer though, was as a non-power user, as they don't need to have any access to financials or to actually edit anything within the project. Um, so this allows them just to scan the equipment out to the relevant jobs. And then scanning out on the computer, we also found was a lot faster than trying to use the small application. Um, as good as the application is, it's just not as quick as it is to do it on the computer with a very large job. Perfect. And um, regarding the warehouse, um, can you tell us about a common scenario that you might run into in the warehouse and, and how you guys uh, handle that kind of situation? Yeah, so one of the problems we always encounter is our lastminute.com 
clients that like to change things as we're about to load into going to the um, job. So this makes it very difficult for our operations manager as she needs to quickly try and do some alterations. So the easiest way that she found to actually do this was to actually create an additionals project. Um, so the reason why we've done this- Sorry, is Colin, I'm just going to, I, uh, I didn't stop sharing. So uh, if you could uh, share your screen as well while we're talking about this, that way sure. we can- Not a problem. Show what we're talking about. Wow. Google Chrome. Shit. Okay, perfect. Okay. So because of in the past, we actually had it where a project was changed four or more times before we actually um, got the got the stuff down to the into the vehicle. We had stuff that was missing from the pool preps or the guys were skipping things because I thought they'd already loaded it. So we then created the additionals project. Um, and this additionals project um, just is using our normal project template. Um, so if I just go there, we can have a look. So just create a normal general project and fill it in as soon as it loads. Yeah, there we go, quoting template. So we actually just use that. And then on our actual job, we actually created an extras field called reference, our reference. And this will reference back to a project that we have just so we can keep everything together and everything neat and tidy. We'll also then just ensure that our time schedule matches what the original project was, unless there are some alterations on that. So if, for instance, it's going to go in the day after for whatever reason, then we'll just change it as needed. Um, and then we'll just put in the equipment as required. The only change that we normally do, though, is if the client requests the change, we'll charge them for it. However, if a project manager requests the change just to add some niceness or whatever, um, then we'll zero out the price because the client didn't request the change. So it's unfair to expect them to pay for something that the project manager wanted to do. Then what we'll do as well, when we've got some large jobs as well, is we'll, we've created two different types of uh, packing slips. So the first one we've created, this one? No, it's not. This one here. So the first one we created is a multi-project uh, packing slip. It is split up in such a way that we can actually go over everything, ensure that everything is as it should be. So here we've broken it up into where the room is, what the time schedule for that specific room is, and then here you'll see all of our equipment as well. So we created it in such a way that it's quick and simple to for the warehouse team to work on. So you've got the simple quantity of the equipment. You've then got the guy that will tick if they've prepped it. And then afterwards, again, they'll tick if they've loaded it. This just creates that double redundancy to make sure that we um, don't miss anything that goes into the truck. Then you've got, of course, the item, and then we've got our notes. So the notes is more relevant when you've got items like here. So there's custom, for instance, so there's bypassing track. That's something we don't own. We don't have the tracks that allow the LED screen to split apart. So we've got our supplier, Doe, who actually does do all that. And so we've got them the notes to actually say what comes from Doe, what comes from KDE events as well. So we, this just helps to actually try and make sure that everything stays together. Um, and as I say, this is a large project. We've then got all of this just for the one room. Let me just get to the next room. And then here we've also got some notes for the project itself for that specific room as well. So it'll tell you some information about which vehicles are going, who's actually in there. So in this case, JF, any 
Everybody that's in brackets is our um, project manager. And then we've got all the rest of these guys that are all coming in to actually help and do the setup. And then here you'll see it gives dates and times and everything else just for the person to actually go in and check and make sure that they, their times are all correct. Here we've even got structural COCs when the guy's gonna come in to certify. It just helps really when you've got such a large job. Then here we've got the next one, the pavilion overflow. Then that one is then also it's then got its time schedule, it's got its set of equipment. And we'll often have a briefing meeting before this on a job like this, just to make sure that everybody knows what has to be loaded in first or second and that sort of thing. Then we also have our basic little jobs um, project. So this is now when we, it's just a simple go there, set up, do the event and come back home. So here, time of time schedule as usual, same sort of layout um, as the other one, quantity, prep, load and item and notes. And this is all just very basically laid out for the guys to see what's happening where, exactly the same sort of layout. Um, it's just, we found that this was the easiest way to make sure that there's no loss of any equipment um, from the warehouse to there and there's no misunderstandings. So everybody will get this beforehand and everybody will be able to understand it without having to ask too many questions. So definitely what we found, if anybody wants to take notes as the most important is the notes section, really very, very important. Um, it, as you can see, it also includes like what was sub hiring and all that sort of thing. Um, it also includes the address of where the actual thing is. We've made it a rule that we are not going to do an event without the full address. The simple reason is somebody goes, it's going to be at Santon Convention Center. Okay, Santon Convention Center has got 20 rooms. Which room is it in? Um, and it makes it difficult. In this case, it was actually on the golf course itself. So we'll just always do, leave that to be confirmed, just to be sure. Um, and then the time schedule. Here we will see we've got setup, show, and strike. Quick, simple, to the point, nobody misses what needs to go in there and what needs to be done. So it really, this is, has been the easiest way for us to get all this going. Thanks for that, Colin. So would you say that, um, so creating that additionals project and also having this level of detail in your packing slip helps those kind of last minute changes. Have you, do you, since you guys have used Redman, do you feel like those last minute changes and things that get missed when those last minute changes, has that been reduced now with, with how you do things? Yeah, it's definitely been reduced now because of that. Um, it helps us just to keep everything together and because of the additionals going in there, it means that nobody can say, but I couldn't see it because there was an, a change at the last minute or I had the previous slip. And it prevents anybody from missing anything from that. Perfect. So for any of you users that also experience those with those last minute changes while the crew is actually packing in the warehouse, then uh, Colin recommends using that additionals project. A note from me, you could also use a, an extra sub project and you can remove the sub projects from financials or, um, or planning. Um, so either or will help with that issue. All right, perfect. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. Um, I, I know that a popular question that I often get asked is uh, how do I deal with equipment that I need to buy? Um, so can you explain a little bit more about how you deal with that in Rentmen? Uh, so for, for those items that you do need to purchase for events. Yeah, so what we always had is we've got a purchase order way of working on things. We don't really do it as a sub rental or anything in that line. Um, so for a normal project, we will actually um, have, here I'm going to use a very basic um, monthly costs job that we've got. This we use as our go-to if we need to hire 
not hire, but need to buy anything. So this one specifically is a buying pro uh, project. So this is pretty much the same sort of scenario, whether we're doing a sub rental or whether we're doing a buying. So with the sub rental, it'll be within the project that we're working on itself. Um, we'll always add a dummy item like all cabling. It's a nice empty item that has nothing linked into it. And you can see we put a large quantity like 50,000. Um, what this helps us with is also to hide that within a project. So we'll then have a line item like all cabling 100, um, consumables 100. So then we can have like 200 different objects or different rentals that we can do at the same time. So normal all cabling, sub rent shortages. So we'll just create a new sub rental. And here we'll just label it what we need to label it. Um, so let's call it uh, sanitizer for shows. Okay, so nice, quick, easy sanitizer for shows. We'll leave the number to automatically generate. This is the PO number that we use. We don't use a document number because the document number, the moment you regenerate, it creates a new number. So it, the number can very quickly skyrocket and financial people don't like to see, especially when they audit, that the numbers go from 20 to 50, for instance, if you have a lot of mistakes going in. So we just leave it as the sub rental number. Uh, we leave this type as delivered to warehouse because it generally will be. Status, we only do any sub rentals when it's confirmed. We don't prepare it beforehand or anything else just in case, because if, it get, if the whole job gets canceled, then we have to go cancel all of those POs and everything else. And when you've got three or four jobs a day per person, it makes it very difficult to try and handle that. So we just do it as it's confirmed. So account manager will obviously be who does it. Reference is the, is the um, supplier's reference. So this is user QU12345, that's their quote number to us, and that's all fine. Uh, time schedule, you can leave all this as is, or you can change it if you want to, um, but leave, we just leave it as it, it's easier. Then our reference will be the job number of what we are actually doing. This again is that link back. Because if anything doesn't link up, it then makes it difficult to try and find what job it was supposed to be for. So it just helps us to see where it was supposed to be linked and everything else. Um, these here are all for calculations that we use. Um, you'll see when I generate the, um, the sub rental slip that it's there. Um, and then you'll see you've got paid, yes or no, it's literally just for that. Then under equipment, once it loads, here you've got your dummy item. So all cabling is there. So you'll double click into it, remove it, and then name it. Sanitizer. In quantity, let's say we're buying 20 today at a cost of 40 or 40 rand each. And then just to make sure our factor will make it one, because that's all that we need. Then we're going to get them to deliver it to us. So I've hired out. So we've also created the sub hire item over here. Again, it's a dummy item. It just helps us to put things in very quickly and easily. Um, and then you can just rename whatever you need to rename and just go through everything, make sure that it's all done. And there we go. We've got our items that we have, what the quantity is, um, what the sub rental cost is. We'll also include any discount that we get. So 
over here, you have to actually display every single item in a quote. Um, the simple reason is that you don't necessarily know who's going to get it on the other end. And if they get confused because they don't see that discount in there, it causes a nightmare. So we display everything. Then create sub rental slip. Just save it. Trading purchase order. Trading letterhead. Generate. And that happens sometimes. We just redo it. Okay. And then here you can see, I uh, didn't fill in any supply details, I should actually have. Here's the reference for the supplier. That's our reference. So if they then, we also require that when we get an invoice from the supplier, they have to reference our numbers. So our PO number, as well as our reference number just so that we don't get any problems and that the um, auditors at the end of the year don't come moaning at us. Then here, this is our total. We do total excluding that first, then of course any discount amounts, the subtotal is there before, before that, and then that amount and total including. Um, I don't know, Alison, if we want to maybe give a, maybe i do another demonstration off camera just to actually show how all that works. But we can discuss that later. Um, and yeah, and then we've got our notes section here. This will include any notes like to be collected or being delivered on X day. Um, so yeah, that's how we do our POs. Whether it be a monthly additional cost or whether it be for, Projects, it's exactly the same sort of time or flow. We just, um, if it's for a show, it's done within the show and the monthly cost is within the monthly cost project. Perfect. It looks like we have a couple of questions, Colin, if you don't mind. Um, we have somebody that was wondering, what was the template that you used to create your PO slips? Uh, a lot of hard work, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, so I sat with Lauren probably for about four hours to build this template. Um, that's why I'm saying if you want, I can always give a demonstration of this actual template and how to actually construct it so that if anybody wants to do this, they can actually have it as detailed. Um, but it was so actually show. And did you did you use one of our system templates as a basis or did you start fully from scratch with that template? Um, I started fully from scratch because as nice as your templates were, um, my operations manager wasn't so happy with how it looked and everything else. I just started from scratch just to get it to look where I needed it to look. We have another question. Um, somebody was wondering, are there advantages to the barcodes that you use in compared to QR codes? Um, they don't have any right now and they were looking for a good solution. Yeah, um, not really any pros or cons to either system. Um, we are using a legacy system where it was all barcoded beforehand. And the barcoding scanners that we have only do barcodes. like we are just having a technical difficulty uh, just really give me a second. oh we got you back colin uh you yeah. were just saying that it, it was part of the legacy system your your barcodes yes yeah, sorry our legacy system um was all based on barcodes it wasn't based on anything else um so our barcode scanner is only for barcodes it doesn't actually do anything else than barcodes perfect 
Okay, I think uh, unless there's any other questions on PO side of things, uh, we'll kind of go ahead and move on to setting up overviews and some of the overviews, Colin, that you uh, you find most important and how you display the information and get what you need to do in, a, in an easy way. Yes, yeah. Okay. So with our project, let's just go straight into a project that is open just to help speed it along. So what we've got in our um, project overview, so when you're actually busy with the, um, with the equipment, we've found that having too much equipment up at the top made it difficult to see what needs to be where. So the easiest was actually just going with the simple name of what equipment is going to be in there, what quantity is in there as well, um, what the unit price is. So again, you can just immediately go along and see what the price is per line, the factors, so how many days it's being, um, it's being charged out for, the equipment status. So as you can see, this is a shortage. So it helps just for people to see you easily. And external remark. So we use the external remark to both show on the quotation and within the warehouse, what notes we needed to add on to there. Um, it's more used for the warehouse. So in our projects, you won't actually, or our quotes, you won't see any of those external remarks because it's more for internal reasons. Um, we don't really make any of those notes there for the client, unless the client wants to see. Um, then we've got our discount and then total price. This was the easiest way for us to work. Um, we could of course have gone more in depth, but when this is all the information that you need and this is all the information the client needs, there's no reason to add extra lines just to make it look busier than what it actually is. Then the other, one of the other overviews that we have are for sub rentals. So again, I'll just go into one that is open just to speed up the process. So again, it's very similar sort of layout. So we've got the name of the item, the quantity of the item, the sub rental cost, what the discount will be, the factor again. This external remark we don't really use. Um, that's more for um, when we are busy making notes within the sub rent itself, not really for us, uh, for the supplier. And then again, total price. These prices are excluding of that just as a heads up. Then another overview that we have is for all projects. So this is if we're looking at the actual project itself. So as you can see, I've got a large time frame there. Um, so let's just go to this week. So we've got our different layouts. Um, I personally keep the color up because I've got it linked to different um, project, project types. Um, then you've got the project number, the name of the project. So that is just easily noticed. The project status. So here you've got returned, pending, on location, confirmed, that sort of thing. And then the project progress. This has become so handy. Um, I know that not everybody at my company uses it, but it's nice to actually see what, where your project's actually lying, whether you've got pro, uh, equipment shortages, personnel shortages, um, where it is, whether it's confirmed or pending, that sort of thing, whether it's also been um, invoiced as well, it does help a lot. Um, and then tasks as well. So that helps just to keep everything together. Then also you can see who the client is, 
where the actual location is. So if you just, if you don't open it up and see where everything is, you can just look straight here. Um, you can see the start of the start of the project and the end of the project. So this will be linked to our start of setup and end of strike. So it just links up like that. Um, and then the project type, we've only really got two types. Um, we've got dry, uh, dry highs and project. And then here you can see number of sub projects, um, one, three, that just helps you to see whether it's going to be a large project or smallish project. It just helps to keep everything together. And Colin, I just wanted to take this moment as well, just to, to mention our column sets, because this is also a, a brand new feature that uh, we, we launched and not everybody might be using them. So also if you want to set up the different column sets exactly, you can kind of find them. Are you, have you guys started setting some up? Yeah, um, we pretty much had them set up from the very start when we started it. So it hasn't really changed too much from there. But as you said, it's nice here on this little gear just to say store column set. Exactly. And then you can just quickly do it. So that does help a lot as well. And then one of the last workflows that we work on, the sub rentals. You can also see this is a much less busy one. So again, we've got the name of it, who the supplier is, what the status of that uh, sub rental is. Um, we do get some uh, canceled ones. Those all depend on whether it's a job that was canceled last minute. So it was confirmed and then canceled. Have I gone? Hello. Yeah, I, I think you're good, Colin. Okay, cool. Sorry, it was just I'm seeing my my video feed. There's you're pause. a little frozen, but we can hear you loud and clear, which is okay, most cool. important. <laughs> well, can you at least still see my screen? <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Okay, so then you've got the project section there, and that is actually relevant to which project it was actually linked to. Um, the number of the, uh, the actual sub rental number, then what our reference is. This again is if for whatever reason it didn't link up to the um, project, then we can at least just go back and just add it into that project at a later date. Um, the usage period, the use from, use until, and then the reference. Again, that's then a reference for um, normally it'll include like their invoice there or commission. So normally it'll have their reference, but sometimes we choose not to do it that way. And yeah, then there is also another column here that I see isn't here. Um, we actually have a paid line as well. So this is quick and simple just to see that it has actually been paid there. Um, our accounts manager isn't very good at filling that in, to be honest, but the thought is there. <laughs> and that's it pretty much from our overviews. Perfect. Thanks for sharing those, Colin. Um, we have a, a question. Um, uh, somebody would like to know, so if they understand correctly, um, they can make their purchase orders for sales items. Um, but they were wondering when delivery has been made by the supplier, um, do, do, how do you like, how do you do that? So do you immediately go in and then do you schedule the delivery or uh, so that the stock is increased or how does, how does that after PO part happen in, uh, in purchasing those orders? Those yeah, so that all depends on what the specific item is. Um, if it's normal consumables for the office, like the paper and that sort of thing, we don't keep track of all that. Um, but when it's batteries and that sort of thing, then when we get it, we'll just, once we get it, we'll then just go into the equipment and then we'll just fill it in there. And so can you, can you uh, maybe go and show um, uh, 
where you actually add the stock because uh, you can uh, add the delivery date of the of that stock uh, for it to be added into availability. Yeah, sure, not a problem. Uh, should be on. I think this one's actually serialed. Yeah, and uh, Isabel, it also depends on, uh, yeah, well, with your sales stock, uh, it depends, I guess, on how you're tracking that, but most of the time you're not going to do that with serialized items. So you can assign a bulk, uh, you know, if you've got 50 uh, tape coming in, uh, you can bulk have that being delivered. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, just come think of one now that we've got there. So he'll just say, uh, sorry, schedule stock movement. And then quantity of 400, for instance, what the date is, what the time was, um, just adding in here, new stock. And you can add in details. So then you can add in like your um, purchase order number. So PO, I'm not sure what number it is. So one, two, three, four, five, and confirm. So there you've now added in your new stock It'll just say enter manually and it's all fine. That's just, we find the easiest way to add all that sort of thing in there. And Isabel, uh, that date and time that's set there, that is when the uh, inventory will be adjusted at that date and time. Um, yeah. So you don't have to manually, you don't have to remember or set a time in your calendar. Just make sure you do it beforehand and then the, uh, the inventory will be added at that date and time. Yeah, easiest way. Perfect, thanks Colin. Um, I think we wanted to start opening things up for a bit more questions on the topics we just discussed. So if anybody has any questions on uh, any any warehouse workflows, how how you know a, a real life uh, AV professional uh, handles issues in the warehouse, uh, if anything about sub renting and, and purchase orders uh, or also overviews in. So uh, please feel free to post questions in the Q&A. We'll, we'll take a, a little break here to answer some of the questions. Um, and then if, uh, if we don't have any more questions come through, we, we may open up uh, to a couple of other topics, uh, but let's see if there's any questions outstanding. Okay, Colin, it looks like we have a couple of questions that have come through. Um, so the first question is, how do you handle overbookings that you cannot solve? Um, so how we do that, if we do have an overbooking, so we've got one set of equipment overlapping another, um, it's quite common actually. Uh, we would then actually sub rent those stuff over to another company. Uh, we've got quite a good relationship with many of the different AV companies around us. So we then just would create the PO and all that sort of thing after we get the quotation from the supplier. Um, it's just the easiest way to prevent us having to stress about having to jump equipment from one show to the next to the next. Um, of course, it sometimes happens, but yeah, we definitely try to just sub hire where we can on there. And Colin, just to confirm, you would almost do it in the exact same way as you would a purchase order. So would you create the sub rental directly in the project and then uh, you would then confirm it, I guess, after the quoting and all of that, right? Correct, yeah. Exactly the same sort of way as what we do the normal POs and all that sort of thing. Perfect, okay. Um, the next question that we have is, um, how do you deal with the de late returns of equipment? So when you have some delays in the warehouse, I yeah. think uh, we had we had actually talked about this uh, yeah. quite a lot before. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you just want to explain uh, how that yeah. might be still a challenge. <laughs> so yes, this is actually one of the areas that we still struggle with. Um, we we're trying to find the right solution here, where we actually are making it the best for everyone but it's very difficult when the warehouse crew don't always check to make sure that the equipment's back unless we actually ask them for it so we actually have 
tried our best to get the guys more involved to make the solutions but unless the guys are asked to check the emails they don't check the emails they don't bother to check the notifications on their phones so it makes it difficult for us to always do it and to ask the um the accounts manager to always be checking with the notifications um it makes it difficult for us to actually view that so if anybody has any suggestions we are open for that but we are still trying to find the right solution other than hiring another person to actually focus on the late returns and the like yeah as much as rentman uh, it provides a lot of help i think uh, that human uh, that not human error but that uh, human aspect is sometimes hard to get over so yeah if if any of you have any uh, nice recommendations for colin and uh, how to get the crew to to be more specific and and really thorough and checking uh, that things are not delayed. Uh, please send them through the chat or, or through the Q and A or in an email to us, uh, so we can pass those along to Colin as well. Definitely, yeah, please. But a, a good question for sure. Thank you, Arthur. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we have another question, and if you could share your screen for this one. Uh, so the question is, where do your notes info come from? For example, all of your notes on the packing slips. Yes. Okay, so for that, we actually created a extras field for that. So we were finding that it was very difficult to put in the notes and make people put it in the correct area. So in here, you'll see our project, we'll have prep notes and project notes there, same under project, prep notes, as well. So the prep note is literally just for what is going to be prepped. So what, well, also like what's being sub hired and the like. And then that just reflects over here under the job, under general. So we actually created all these extra fields. And then when I created the templates, I then had these link in again to actually help with the um, job so your project notes that's more for uh, what's going to be going out to the client so that's a note that we put at the top of our screen just actually create a quote so you can see yeah generate So we created this whole quotation around like notes and that sort of thing. So the client can get information as they want it. Wait for it to go and then, okay. So here's like all the information, 30 days, that sort of thing. This notes here, that is our project notes. So that is, they then fill in the extra information and that fills in after this quick little note here. Um, this is a note that is added on every single quotation. And so it's just easier just to add everything after that. And then the prep note, as you saw in the in these examples, uh, is it this one? No, this is a purchase order. Um, but with that, it then, uh links it up to that area colin could you show your general tab of, of a project uh because i think that would would give the best view of kind of all the different oh. notes fields sure <clears throat> so on our one we've got a lot of extra input fields so project that's our reference that if we are linking to a previous project like our additionals uh, what the number of guests are. Um, this is more for just so that we know how many people are going to be in the area so that the sound engineer on in charge can actually plan around it. Um, what the room of the event is going to be. So there'll be like you saw in that other example, the pavilion or the ballroom, that sort of thing. Um, here, discount applicable, literally not applicable or included. Um, it was just easier to do it that way than having to try and get them to type in, you get 10%. And then they think they're getting 10% on everything instead of just 
equipment or just on that yeah. project notes that's as i said for within the quotation itself key account manager that is the person who handles the client side of things then who our project manager is going to be that will generally be the key account manager as well but sometimes the key account manager will be jason and the project manager will be lisa for instance um, it all depends on the specific job then prep notes is just for um, what's going down to the warehouse and that sort of thing power facilities required this is just filling in what we need so that we can when we send it out to the client we can tell them straight we need a generator are you supplying one yes or no um, or we need 63 amp power within the venue it just helps us to prevent the client going i didn't know this was needed why is this not there um, and we can actually say but it was on the quotation um, invoice notes is just for invoicing and then this is just quick little sub project as well number of guests so that'll be then for that specific room as well now, Colin, can you click, do me a favor and click on the notes field down below the, the task notes? Yeah, I just want to explain why you do what you do. Um, because if I understood when we spoke before, you mentioned that uh, choosing where this note should be displayed, there was too much human error involved. Okay, so yeah, and I because I, I noticed uh, Syrian, uh, you mentioned that uh, there are different ways that you can use the notes and yes, there are definitely different ways. So if you guys want, you can fully use this notes function. Uh, but like I said, Colin had noticed um, some some human error in this scenario. And I think it really boils down to um, your crew and how uh, technologically literate uh, they are if they're very comfortable with computers have a, a high attention to detail, uh, things like this may be no problem for you as a company and you you can always use this but in Colin's case he was able to find a workaround that worked a bit better for his team specifically yeah we just did that because to tell them okay just show it in the quotation or the contract and that sort of thing it was very difficult for them to always remember to click on it and then they were getting highly frustrated because it wasn't showing and they've made the note but it's not showing why isn't it showing so this is, it was just easier to create the separate notes fields just to do that. Okay, I've got another question as well. Okay, if you um, if you have a large project and you need to hire an extra material that is delivered at the venue by a supplier, I noticed that during the picking of the own material at the local warehouse, the items that are hired in and delivered by the supplier are also in the list to pick. There is no way that the local warehouse can see that they are hired in to my knowledge. So I think what um, they are asking is sometimes you might have items delivered straight to the venue, in which case the note section in your, uh, your prep list uh, probably isn't so important. Um, well, that's where our prep notes comes in. Um, it's exactly for those situations we were saying the supplier is delivering to venue at this time. The supplier is going to be there at this time. Um, it's exactly for that situation so that we can always see what's going in and out from the suppliers. Um, it also then means that we've given that information over to our suppliers and they then um, know what needs to happen when. We, at the end of the day, though, we give that onus onto the supplier to be there on time and to be there at the correct time. Um, this is how we've been doing all that sort of thing. And and Chris, um, I, yeah, I think that there really is just a, you need to add an extra section there in a document uh, to maybe inform a uh, crew. Uh, Syrian also mentioned that um, they set the warehouse location of subrented items to subrental, so they changed the warehouse location. So when the, the the slip is printed, they can see subrental next to it as well. So there's a couple of different ways. Um, but if you need help in your specific case, Chris, uh, let us know in the support team so that we can uh, help find the right solution uh, for your workflows, because uh, there are a couple that we can help with. Yeah, there's ways and means around everything we found. Definitely. Okay, I think 
Um, at the moment, we don't have any more questions, but uh, let's keep things open for just a couple more minutes just to see if anybody uh, thinks of any last minute questions uh, before we start wrapping things up. All right, I'll do one last call for any questions while we have Colin here. Um, if you do think of questions after the fact, that's no problem. We can always uh, ask Colin if it's a very specific question or we can help you uh, with the support team finding a solution to what you need to. All right. Well, let's go ahead and wrap things up. I would love to end with a, a giant thank you and maybe a round of applause, maybe slightly round, sli silent round of applause on your side for Colin uh, and sharing some of his workflows and insights into uh, uh, his workflows. So thank you so much today for, for your time, Colin. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pass some feedback on to you in case we get any questions for you after. And uh, maybe we can, uh, like you mentioned, uh, show some, some more PO information so we can take that offline and, and see if we can share some more insights with our users. Okay, definitely, yeah. Yeah. And uh, just for everybody else, uh, we hope you enjoyed this webinar today. It's a bit different uh, th than we, what we usually do. So if you did enjoy it, please let us know if you'd like to see more uh, uh, experts uh, or hear more from Colin maybe on some other things. Uh, or if there's any other feedback you have, please let us know. Uh, you can send an email to support at rentman.io. In the meantime, we wish you all uh, a great rest of the day and success and health. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon at our next webinar. Bye, everyone. Cheers. Thank you.